the big cat. Yes, I promised you a good long video about the cat. I don't think it'll be that long actually. I've got a load of photos here which will be there and we'll talk through this. Um, wow, what can I say? Big lover of tigers. I hope you are too. What an awesome, awesome creature. Wow. So with this one, I wanted to do my research before I even attempted to do a tiger because I wanted to get it right. I wanted, I wanted it to at least represent the tiger and look, look the part, you know. So off I went to the zoo. <laughs> and I literally parked myself in the tiger enclosure for pretty much half a day. And it was quite quiet. So first of all, I just went around the outside of the um, enclosure and just took some different photos to this one, which um, looking very regal. And it kind of, um, when you look at this, you can see that on one side, it, the body sort of goes that way. Cause I was trying to sort of get him as if he was sort of laying in the grass so had a bit of an angle to him you know i knew what was going on in my head so yeah um and then i got really up close and personal which was amazing um just caught the sweet spot at the zoo um feeding time and was allowed into a, a much more personal area where you could get really close um and that was when it really struck me just how impressive their heads are they're just so wide and so awesome uh, i was just in awe of this animal i was just sat there going wow you are impressive and i think it really helps with doing this because i wanted to definitely make sure that i i had that expanse right you know because they literally when you get up close to a tiger their heads are just ridiculous and um, I wanted to try and get that across in this sculpture as well um, so yeah I just spent so much time looking at expressions and the nose the bridge of the nose you know because I think there's a big temptation to emphasize the nose a lot and make it more like our sort of noses but their noses are not like that at all um, it's relatively flat actually and, and that was something else that I, you know, I'm glad I went to see because otherwise I think I might have messed that up. But what an animal. I mean, wow. Some of the expressions. And I took all these, ex all these photo expressions and being there into my head when I started to, to build. Because he's sort of like got a bit of that angle going on as well. Especially this photo, you can kind of see there's a lot going on in my head at the time. And then the teeth, I wanted to get some real good shots of the teeth. Wow, super scary. For something that looks like you could just cuddle, how deadly and dangerous they are. Just how can you not be impressed with tigers? They are awesome. Um, look at, sticking his tongue out at me. <laughs> what a character. But honestly, if I hadn't gone to the zoo and done that, I don't think I could have done that. So if you're thinking of doing a tiger, which I hope you do, because they're super cool to do, get yourself to the zoo, spend half a day at the zoo, get around the tiger enclosure and really get a feel for how impressive this animal is and then come home and make one. I mean, look at these teeth. I mean, wow, awesome, awesome, awesome. Right, anyway, you came here to see how I made him. So I'm now gonna show you. So as per usual, we start off with the base. So I basically just uh, got a tray <laughs> and I've started laying down some uh, tin foil um, and I've decided that I'm gonna attach it with the actual clay because I've, when it bakes, it'll just stick to the tray and it'll, it'll be nice and solid. And then, see this was a, it's an odd shape to make for a tiger. So um, I kind of built, built the tin foil up in layers to start with. 
Um, I was very aware um, that I'd, I'd done some research on the skull and everything else, which is coming up in a minute. But um, basically, I was just building like the the, the body part and um, just putting in some foundations for the jaw as well, the bottom jaw. Um, now this is a skull. Um, it's upside down, but basically this is a bit I was telling you about in the previous video about these are a couple of bits you need to get right if you're going to sculpt a tiger, personally I think anyway. Um, kind of around this area on the tiger, they have almost like a steering wheel effect going on. It's like these two bones that kind of really come out a lot and, and that's important to get the shape around the sides to get that sort of like it's hard to explain it but that's why I made this that way and um, obviously flipped it over and put it on top um, there you go I'm holding it there so you can see it a bit better so if you imagine that flipped over the other way those two bones would be kind of like below the eyes but give given massive cheek area so yeah so that's kind of doesn't look anything like a tiger the little bits around the edge or these bits around the edge are um they're just really they were really going to be for just supporting the mane they don't have a mane tigers but they kind of do it's a weird one they um they just have a bit more fur around here, whereas a lion has a full on mane, but they, they tend to have a bit more fur around here from what I can see. I might be totally wrong, and if you know more about tigers than me, then tell me off. <laughs> but that's my understanding of it, so I put some extra supports there. Um, so at this stage, obviously, it looks nothing like a tiger, it's just the structure. Um, so yeah, then we go for clay. And start laying down some clay um, yeah I just at this stage I was just like I'm just following the tinfoil because I'd done my research and I was confident that if I just kept following the shape of the tinfoil everything else would f fall into shape so yeah I'm building it all up building the jaw structure building um, the foundation for the nose um, the eyes go in and wow <laughs> I don't know I just I didn't really know what to think at this stage I thought like it's got something going on there so we'll just carry on then I put some ears on see the ears were really difficult for me and some some would say they're too small some would say they're not too small there's an awful lot of fur going on on a tiger and also I don't know if you've noticed even with domestic cats they have this way of like either having their you know they have a way of squashing their ears down or almost like folding them backwards so they're less noticeable when they're stalking or anything like that and um, if you just have the ears up like that it just doesn't look right um, and you can see here even here they're too big I mean, it just doesn't look right. And I know, like I said, some would say, well, they're too small, but what I've tried to make that look like is that they've he's collapsed his ears down, if that makes sense. So anyway, I carried on for now with the ears the way they were and started to build up more structure around the jaw and just trying to bulk it out a bit because I wasn't really feeling the whole wide face bit at this point you know um so i was just building some more clay up i've got the nose on and um you can see that uh i was looking at this and i still felt the nose the bridge of the nose was too much as i said before they don't actually have much of a bridge of a nose really it's quite subtle anyway so yeah i was just just doing that and sorry i've got the ipad here i'm just trying to i know it probably looks rude that i keep looking down there but to talk about these i've got to have them here first so <laughs> so here we go um 
nose is, uh, I'm putting some black around the bottom of the nose and trying to get the, the structure here right. Um, and also inside the mouth, putting some colour in there. Yeah, I'm just building up around the sides a bit more as well. You can see I've built up a little bit more around the edges to bring sort of the neck flowing down more. So, yeah, I mean, you can definitely see that thing I was saying about with the bone, you know, it's got to be there. It has to be there because you don't get that effect of a tiger's head if you don't have it. I wasn't overly happy with the ears still, I wasn't overly happy with a few bits here, but I thought, I'm enjoying myself. Let's just keep going. So what I thought, yeah, I thought I'd texture it. Um, Cause I hadn't really worked out how I was gonna do the effects on the tiger, whether it was just gonna be like, like this, just swept. I used, um, what did I use? I used one of these like this, well, I can't get it out, um, like this sort of effect, but smaller. And I just sort of scraped it all. And I just kept scraping and scraping and scraping. Um, yeah, it was, it was giving me some texture anyway, but you look more like Rupert Bear now. And I was like, hmm. But then I had an idea. I thought, what I'll do now is I will start to um, put the teeth in because that'll give me a better visual of the whole thing. So what I did with the teeth is I, um, first of all, I, I wanted to make them as teeth color as possible. So I used white, a little bit of yellow and a very tiny bit of brown. Um, I mashed that together and it came out with this amazing kind of tooth color which I was really happy with. So I made all the teeth. I went back to this skull picture I had with, which had all the teeth still in it. And I made all the right teeth for the right parts of the, of the mouth. Uh, and then I pre-baked those. So then I could literally just push, the, push them straight in. And uh, yeah, they looked awesome. It really, I mean, you can see here, it really changed a lot, you know, because I had to make sure also that you lined them up so that the, so they, they match basically. Um, yeah, still looks a bit Rupert Bearish, but definitely better with the teeth in, so. Uh, yeah, I was really happy with these teeth. They looked really awesome. I think getting the sizing right was really important on the teeth because again, such an awesome and impressive animal. If I'd have just put diddy little teeth in, it just wouldn't have the same effect. So now you can see really, really, it looks like an aggressive Rupert Bear now. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm showing my age now, Rupert Bear. Probably most people don't even know, you don't even know who Rupert Bear is. Go and go and Google it. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Um, yeah, the teeth were just looking awesome at this point. I was really happy with the teeth. Um, starting to look proper aggressive. I did a bit more texture in the mouth and put an extra bit in for the tongue and stuff like that as well. Yeah, he was, um, and I highlighted around the edge with the black because they, they kind of have that sort of line of black around the edge of their mouth. It, it does make a lot of difference. So yeah, I was, um, I was really happy. I think, didn't I get five? Yeah, I got the number of teeth wrong on the front. Um, there's one missing at the top and uh, I didn't even notice it, but my son did. <laughs> Sharp eyed, he's like, there's not enough teeth. So I had to amend that. But, um, so here we are. I mean, there's something going on there, but it wasn't really quite where I wanted it. I built up a little bit more around the cheeks and that, and then used this again just to... So I had quite a good width at this point. I was quite happy with that. 
and I, I shrunk the ears down a bit more. I think during the whole sculpture, I kept reducing the ears because they kept they kept detracting from the rest of the face. And that's why me and the ears didn't really get on. We didn't get on. Um, it is what it is, but... Um, I started to lay down the black markings. Again, you've got to get this bit right. You know, they're all unique, these markings on, on tigers, you know. This is their identity, all these markings, you know, they're all unique. This is why in the wild they can track them, I think, by these markings. Again, if I'm talking rubbish, let me know, but I'm pretty sure I'm right on this one. It's like they're unique. Um, like us, we have fingerprints, Matt. That's their unique imprint um, to identify them by. So anyway, I wanted to make sure I got these markings as, as accurate as I could get them, really. So I spent quite a bit of time. I, mean, I know it looks like I just slapped them on, but there was a... There was a lot of measuring going on, even though it does just look like I've thrown them on. I wanted to get them symmetrical and everything where I, as best as I could anyway. Um, yeah, when I put the put the markings around the eyes, around they really it really did sort of like change his attitude a little bit. He got a lot more tigerish then. Uh, you can see now, it does make a big difference when you put that in. So I was really, uh, I was liking it a lot at this point. I still wasn't quite sure whether to just make the black like textured like I'd done with the rest of it, with the white. I just felt it wasn't enough. Didn't I didn't know if it would be enough. So... I was, I was just debating about that at that point. So I just carried on putting the markings on, uh, trying to get them as even and as precise as I could. Um, I really enjoyed doing that bit, actually. That bit at the top of the nose is really funny, isn't it? It's like, I found that quite, quite interesting to do. Anyway, I carried on. Um... I think I went to bed that night and left it like this and it, I was, you know, I was quite happy. Something was definitely happening. He was starting to look pretty tigerish. There's some life coming into him. Very expressive eyes. I gave him a fist pump in the morning. <laughs> he didn't bite me. So that was all right. Um, now, this was a game changer. You gotta imagine, right? I've took all the time to measure all these markings. I've got everyone kind of where I want it to be, so it's all you. And you know what? I did that morning. I just picked up a um. Where is it? I just picked up a knife. I remember I was having a cup of tea, and I thought, "You're not fair enough for me," so I just got a knife. And I just started doing that. And honestly, it just changed so much. I mean, it just it just worked. So I just I just spent the next like two and a half hours just getting as much lift onto the clay as I could to get it as fur like as I could all over and I just kept going and going and going and going and oh my god it was a lot but it was so worth it and you and all those little pieces all those black pieces that were mixing with the white I decided I blew blew off the ones I could but the rest of it I left them in situ because uh, I thought if I try and get them off, I'm just going to smudge black all over the white. So I thought, just leave them there. Worst case scenario, when it comes out of the oven, you can just brush them off. Because any any bit, any bit little bits like that won't actually bond to the rest of the clay. That's a little tip for you. And even if they do try to, with a bit of a brush, they'll come free. So best to leave them in situ, bake it, and then get any bits off like that you don't want. 
because otherwise you end up with a big mess. Anyway, I'm waffling now. Let's carry on. So yeah, so now I'm getting this real fur effect going on. And it's kind of blending all the black in nicely as well. So it's looking more fur-like. I was, I was really happy with that. And then I started to stick some whiskers on. Now whiskers, we've spoken about this in previous videos as well, but I think in the um, pirate video, I said that I like to try and do everything out of clay. Um, when I started building this, I was looking into like um, nylon whiskers that you can get um, model, model makers and um, teddy bear makers and people like that use it. You can just push them in and they're more clear and everything else. But I just thought it was such a cop out. If you're gonna make a tiger out of clay, you need to, you probably do need to make the whiskers out of clay as well. So I I did. I mean, they look, they look quite big in this picture, but they're a lot thinner than that because obviously the camera's picking up the white of the whiskers and making them look quite big. But they're actually a lot, lot thinner than that. Um, yeah, because you don't notice it so much in real life as you do with the camera picking it up, but they're really thin. Um, so yeah, I did loads and loads of whiskers and baked them all off and then started pushing them into the clay. I mean, I really enjoyed it because it, one thing I noticed when I was with the tiger at the zoo, their, their whiskers are random and they grow in all directions or they grow out and then down a bit there's no there's no rules you know there's no like Ning. it's not all <laughs> it's not all like every whiskers like straight no they're completely crushed and pushed around um but i also knew they had to be wide enough because we all know what whiskers are for right do we whiskers are Again, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure whiskers are there to guide, give you, a, give the animal a guide on what they can fit through, as in their head size. So the whiskers, if the whiskers fit, then their head will fit. Pretty sure I'm right on that, but you can tell me off if I'm not. But yeah, so I had to make sure the whiskers were relatively big, otherwise it wouldn't look like it was doing its job. So, um, yeah, I put loads on, but wow, you know, look, it's starting to look something, you know, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with the back because I wasn't, it was never going to be, it was always going to be a front facing sculpture, you know, wherever it went in anyone's house or whatever, it was always going to be coming. You were always going to be looking at it from the front. I don't, I don't see anybody going around the back to look at the back at all, but obviously, you know, if it went into an exhibition on a plinth or something, people would see the back. So obviously I needed to do something with the back, but it was a, wasn't my priority. One thing I did notice though, that I was still wasn't happy with the, the overall width of the head. It still didn't give me enough of what I got at the zoo where the awesomeness of the of the size of it. So I started to build another layer of clay around the outside um, to give it more width. And that really started to work for me because I like I liked how it was bulking it out. And then I ended up just carrying on around the back. Because like I said, I hadn't really given the back a lot of thought. So I thought like if I just layer this up all the way around the back as well, then at least it flows so that's what i decided to do and then i was doing the sides as well just uh, overlay 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 i felt also that rather than it being really solid clay with that amount of width it'd be ridiculously thick so by doing this almost like feb uh, fe yeah, i can't get my words out like feathers it would allow um less clay it would allow me to sculpt it in a way that flowed and it would also allow heat transfer in the oven so the heat could get underneath the clay and make it really rock hard and um, I wouldn't use much clay so it was a win-win for me so yeah so I was just trying to put the fur on so it flowed um, 
I was aware at this point that I had to put more markings on as well. So I was a little bit like, have I messed up here or not? Will the markings still work with this kind of feather effect? Anyway, you can see it was like a production line at this point. I'm just making rolls and rolls and flattening them out, cutting them out, sticking them on. It was like a real production line. You can see I'm putting them all on around the back, just trying to layer it up because I was aware that the top was wider than the bottom already and I wanted it to kind of flow. And there was, there must have been like that, that much of a gap between the top and the bottom. And I wanted to, yeah, it got quite interesting at this point. So I put, what I did, I put a bridge down the middle and then built out from there. So not only did it come down like that, but it also uh, went round in a, more of the shape of the animal. So I was bringing everything to that central point, which made a lot more sense to me. And then you can see now I'm really, really layering it up. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of, underneath there's a lot of space. There's those, they're like tiles basically. Yeah, I was, uh, he was becoming a bit of a beast, you know? I was like, look at you. So yeah, a bit odd at the back, to be fair. So I kind of wanted it, I wanted the patterning to go round slightly as well. Because as I said, he was supposed to be under a tree, like, you know, just a bit to one side looking at the world while he was relaxing under a tree. So I had him slightly on an angle. I tend to do that with my sculptures. I did that with the lady as well. She had her head slightly turned. He's he's on the he's on the side a little bit. I do do tend to do that. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I built it all up. Um. I started putting the markings down the side where I'd put the additional clay. I put the markings on the back. Yeah. I was um. It was tying it all in, which was a good thing. I was still a bit worried though with the with the gap between the clay and everything else to do all the all the knife knife work, whether it all collapsed when I got to that bit. But um, the front was looking awesome at this point. Uh, you can see I'm just putting the black, you putting the black around the um, the bottom of the mouth area, the sort of neck area, just tying tying the pattern in. Um, yeah, but the expression was amazing. I was like, wow. Uh, yeah, and then more, the more main type effect coming around the sides. Just building it up because I definitely wanted that big wide head. But I think the angle was really cool as well because it really puts like almost like puts the the nose in in the front a lot and then those eyes looking at you really cool so yeah I'm really happy at this point I'm just building up a bit more around the edges still still wanting more still wanting more just to give it more body but um yeah it's really coming together at this point really happy really happy and then it's, I thought like I'll texture the uh, around the. It, I'm not too worried about it being like um, flat. You know, the, the the kind of the way the fur is breaking up in different areas is fine for me because I mean, you know, animal fur does that as the animals move. The fur kind of separates and stuff. So I thought like, and again, it's a piece of art, so. As long as it's representing the tiger in a great way, I actually feel that having that feathered kind of fur at the back really gives it more presence. I mean, look, I mean, what a beautiful animal. What a beautiful animal. Um, yeah, I was really, really happy, you know. He's big, he's big, he's a big boy, you know. And then I was thinking like, you definitely will go in the oven because you're not that tall. But he was big. 
he weighed something as well. But I was really happy. I thought like, yeah. I don't think I could have done him like that without going to the zoo though. That, that day at the zoo made so much difference to the teeth. And definitely for the nose. I mean, honestly, if I was going to sculpt a tiger without going to see him face to face, I know for a fact I would have had a much more defined nose and I would have struggled. I'd have been like, why, why does it not look like a tiger? Because it's something I think gets missed. I don't think many people realise just how flat tiger's noses are. So... I mean, it just has to be to make that effect. We can see here, there's hardly any definition there for the nose on the bridge. But that's what they're like. I mean, all right, there's going to be variations. Some tigers maybe who don't carry as much weight or whatever, they might have a more defined nose. But as a rule, from what I've seen, most of them don't. That's very, very much a flat. So if you're going to skulk, a tiger, you know, go easy on the nose. Try and make it a, try and make it as smooth all over as possible, and then just a little bit on the attitude on the, uh, on the kind of forehead and eyebrow area. But as regards anything from the bridge of the nose down, it should just really be quite flat and just flow until you get to the nose, which, as you can see, just goes back a little bit. Um, and you can see what I'm talking about there on this one from a side angle. You know, it's 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 subtle. It's so subtle, but it needs to be. It has to be. Um, <laughs> and here we go. There he is in the oven. There's not many people who can say they've had a tiger in their oven. <laughs> I've had a pirate. I haven't had a tiger. I've had a lot. I've had a snake. I've had a dog. My oven has had some had some life, right? So yeah, there he is. Do you know what? Like, he looked so lifelike. I felt quite, I felt quite sorry for him when he was in the oven. He was he's looking at me like, "What you put me in here for?" <laughs> he looked, he's got his mouth open. He's like, "It's boiling in here. Get me out." <laughs> Bless him. And there he is on my side. What a animal. Wow. Wow. I love him. I really love him. I've always loved tigers, so. I was originally going to do the, um, is it a Bengal tiger or what? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I love tigers. I'm not up and up on the terminologies of tigers, but I was going to do the orange one originally, but I'm so glad that I did this one snow tiger as I call him because he's just so striking with the white and black um, he, he's just awesome isn't he you're awesome and I did say to you guys on an earlier video I'd try and show you um, how big he is because he's big but I don't even know if I can do it on camera but I'm going to give it a go because he his presence when you're in front of him is just ridiculous. But I don't know if that'll come across on camera. But we can give it a go, right? I can try and introduce you to him. Um, so we see if we wake the tiger up. You want to come and say hello? I mean, he's super heavy. He is super heavy. But look how big he is. He's huge. I mean, literally huge. Look at the eyes. <laughs> He's a monster. I mean, look at look at the size of him against me. <laughs> He's a monster. Right, you're stealing the show, you've got to go back. Oh. He's heavy. Oh. And... Oh. 
Right, I did promise I'd do that. Um, he is, he's super big and he's super heavy. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this as well. I mean, if you're a Tiger fan, you must have enjoyed this one, right? And are you going to make one? I hope you do. Because um, not that complicated, you know, as long as you get those things that I told you, you know, get that get that um, steering wheel effect going on just below the eyes so you've got that nice jaw shape and then build off of that steering wheel shape, build the nose up like in a, a nice subtle angle like I've done there. So that's the steering wheel and then that's the nice domed bit that goes up over the top and then don't go too mad with the nose, keep the nose nice and flat. And then just build round it. I mean, it's really not that complicated. Honestly, give it a go. It's super cool. I mean, if you love tigers, surely you'd want to do that, right? I mean, I, I loved every minute building that. Because it's more, I mean, tigers are like, for me, I love them. I absolutely love them. Right, guys. Well, this didn't turn out too bad. By the time I edit this, we're going to be around the 40, 40 minute mark, maybe. But it's about tigers, so we can talk about that a bit longer, right? If you're a tiger fan, that's why you're watching this. Um, okay, so coming up after this will be... Hopefully, I'll get me clay for the dragon, so we can do a bit of dragon, dragon clay. In fact... I did actually find a little bit of dragon clay the other day. So if my other, if the clay doesn't arrive, we can do something on the dragon. Let's see if we can get, get the body in the oven. That would be cool to do. Although you guys still seem to be watching all of these how-to ones that I keep doing. How I did the tiger, how I did the woman, how I did the uh, pirate. You seem to love those. Uh, I've got a few more I can do. I can do this guy, <laughs> Mr. Snake. He's quite an interesting build. I can do that one, um, and Elvis, we're going to talk about Elvis, keep pointing to him because he's just there, uh, and then obviously we've got some live sculpting to do with the snake in the kitchen, so yeah, we've got some stuff to be getting on with, there'll be lots of stuff anyway, right guys, I'm waffling again, um, I really hope you enjoyed the tiger, and please go build one, they're amazing, and look after yourselves, subscribe, and like and comment and do whatever you need to do and i will see you on the next one have a good day Pew.